As for the last session, adopting the MOP CDM to enable standardized analytics, I would like to introduce you Christian Rich. He's Vice President Real World Analytics Solution at IQVIA. He's developing a global open research network based on the Odyssey approach. He's also a principal investigator at Odyssey and also served as program manager and principal investigator at UMAP. He will make this session much fruitful as a chair. Let's give, let's give him a big round of applause. All right, we are in the home stretch. Um, we want, don't want to be late for dinner. I expect you all here for dinner. Um, we've heard a lot today about um, achievements, both in terms of uh, spreading adoption of uh, the Odyssey approach all over the world, particularly in Asia, and achievements in terms of generation of uh, evidence and methodology. Okay? Um, this is why we're doing it. We're not doing it for the purpose of just manipulating the data and having nice databases. So what we're gonna talk about now is about manipulation of data and having nice databases. And the only reason we do that is because that's the foundation. We want to be really good at that, but that is not the purpose. I want to emphasize this again and again, um, that the purpose is to generate evidence um, f um, that you know, facilitates and, and improves the health of people on this earth. Um, but we want to do this in such a way that we create, um, that we have a foundation um, that allows us to do this with high quality. So we're gonna talk a little bit generally about the common data model. This will be repetitive for some of you and it's supposed to be repetitive. And I kind of end up in the, in the role of uh, repeating and re, um, iterating this. And then my colleagues, uh, Erica and, and Mui, um, are going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how this can be made easy. Um, what mechanisms and processes we have for doing this and how we check the quality, okay? Um, so let's start. Let's set this tie in the time here. Yeah? Um, OMAP common data model. So how does this, why do we have a common data model and why is the Odyssey approach um, so powerful and um, has a whole lot of people adopt, some, some countries uh, adopting this approach. Traditionally, how has evidence been generated? Um, it's a manual process. It's not an industrial process. It's manual. People had a question, like for example, what's the treatment pathway um, for blood pressure? We heard that earlier today. What do people take if they get diagnosed with high blood pressure? A lot of people get diagnosed with high blood pressure. What do they get, how do they get treated in the different healthcare settings in the different countries? Traditionally, the way that goes is you have a question like this and it's like an appliance. You create an analytic, a piece of analytic which will tell you what these treatments are and you need to ask the data in order to get the answer. And it's kind of like with electricity, you plug the analytic into data. And of course, the data all look the different. Every hospital which sits in the room, the data looks different. Every country, uh, the hospitals in every country, the data look different. People who aggregate data, they aggregate them into their own standard. There are a lot of common data models in the world, except they're only common to this very one um, incarnation of the data, okay? And so the reason I'm using this metaphor is it is so obvious that this needs to be standardized in the world of electricity. If you go and buy an appliance 
a telephone, a flattening iron, anything it is that you're buying, you know you go home and you switch that thing into electricity and it's going to work. It doesn't even occur to us that it might not work. Okay? It only occurs if you go and fly internationally and then on the airport you realize you forgot the adapter and then you buy a new one in an airport shop, very pricey. Um, then you realize, oh my god, this the silly should be, why am I even have to think about this? We are not there yet. What we do is we wire it up, okay? We take the cables and connect them. This is traditional epidemiology all over the world today, every time, every single time. You have one student, one question, one paper. This is how it gets done, okay? Of course, you have a lot of those. And it's crazy, and it's intransparent, and it's slow, and you have to be technical in order to be able to connect your appliance to an electricity grid. Okay? So this is like 1800, 1880 or 1890, okay, when the electricity came up. This is what we're doing. And obviously, we shouldn't be doing it this way. We should be doing it this way. The data are all, they all look the same. Not that they are the same, of course, they're different patients with different uh, experiences, but they look the same. And if you have that, you can have really good appliances. You can have a whole industry who do different things. And they all will look, uh, they all will work. But you go into a shop and you buy a really good mortality tool and a really good safety tool you population level estimation tool. Okay? Some of that we call Atlas. They are commercial people who built these, um, like we heard, we saw today as well, um, from our friends from Evidnet. Okay? All of these, the Tesla, the toaster, the, the water heater, they all will work with the data. That's the promise. We call these the Odyssey tools. This we call the OMOP CDM. That means your job is to convert your data, each of these institutions is one of you, into the model and no, you cannot change the common data model. You cannot say, oh, we have Korean data and like our dear friend who spoke in the previous session, we have Japanese data and we like our codes in Japanese and we like our codes in Korean and we like the German codes and every country has their own ICD-10, everyone. They're all different. I don't know why, but they're all different. Somehow they're all different, these people. Um, we cannot do that because the appliance will not fit. Okay? If you add another prong, it will not fit into the outlet. So that's very important, and you're going to see me on the Odyssey forum say this over and over and over and over again and more or less politely um, scold people who deviate from the standard. We have to stick with the standard. If you don't like the standard, you say that. And if you have a reason to make a proposal to change the standard, it will be changed. There's no evil government institution, bureaucracy, committee who will say, no, you can't have that. This is us in the room and in similar rooms all over the world. It's our standard. We can change that. Okay? But until we change it, this is the standard. There's a good thing um, for the standard, apart from having different analytics tools. One thing is the analytic tool can be very far from the data. In fact, I can write a query and send it to Korea and the answer will be correct if you adhere to the standard and if I write the query right, these two preconditions. The other thing is the data can stay where they are. We don't have to drag them out. We don't have to aggregate them. We don't have to pool them. We don't have to have all sorts of data use agreements of people seeing data that don't belong to the healthcare institutions. The healthcare institutions have the data and that's where the data can stay. 
I can still query it because I know what it looks like because it's in a standard. Okay, so you realize where the why I'm so heavily um, uh, insisting on people keeping with the standard because you can't look through a firewall. I don't know what's happening in Samsung University Medical Center. If it's in the standard, I can ask the data without ever going to be able to see the data themselves. Okay? Which means we can have a network, a global network. We can have small networks. We can have networks of networks. We can have individual people participating in a network. It's like Facebook. Anybody can do any question, any study with anybody. Okay? That's very powerful if, saying it again, we all play the game right. That's why it's important. That's why we are here. These two ladies are going to tell you how um, Odyssey is going to help you do that. It's also important to see that nothing is going on in the middle. Once you are in, the, in an Odyssey network participant, you control what you do. There's nobody here, there's no George, no Christian, no Patrick, no pa Martin, uh, no Ray, to approve what you are doing. This network partner here, Samsung University, can initiate a study, and we want to see those studies, by the way, okay? with these guys, with that one, with this one. Okay? Nobody has to be asked. There's no command and control. It's an open network where people decide they opt in. They decide they want to participate in research. They ask the others. If everybody agrees, you have a study. You have a good study. It's a multi-center, multi-country study to generate evidence. This stuff publishes well. This stuff allows commercial studies. You can make money on this. Okay? So this is the good thing, but we all have to play. Um, how do you do this? Um, I'm saying it again. We have to adhere to the standard. If you are in doubt, please ask. The forum is there to help you. There are lots of people who know stuff. So what can we sta uh, standard? There are a whole lot of things which can, we can standardize, and we are. Foundational thing is the data. We have to make the data look the same. Which, and the data means there is structure. What are the tables, the fields, the data types? The content, what's in there? Do we have cost or do we not have cost? Do we have visits or not? And then semantic. How do we call things? We, say, we just heard that diabetes is a big problem in, um, in Singapore. Diabetes, or type 2 diabetes mellitus, should be called the same thing in exactly every OMOP CDM incarnation. Okay? Primary liver cell carcinoma, same thing. Ranitidine, same thing. This is the semantics. So we standardize the structure, the content, and the semantics, and then we standardize the research of how we are asking questions. What are these toasters and flattening irons and Teslas? How do we build a cohort? How do we define covariates? How do we run the analysis? What the results should look like? Please start adhering, building these standards and adhering to these standards. There could be lots of different analytics. They should apply the same way of doing it, and we can work together on what that way looks like. There's a um, OMAP CDM that defines the structure. These are the tables, and each table has, has fields. It's all on the wiki page. Okay? If you find some problem, let us know, bring it up. They, these, wiki, uh, these tables support a whole lot of different use cases which is this animation, which I'm not going to go into. So you're not, not every use case needs every table, which means you don't have to have each table. But there are the few tables, 
like the red ones here, which pretty much everybody should have. Mm -hmm. There is a standard for the content. I'm saying it again. OM in the OMOP common data model, you do not own your reference table anymore. The reference table comes from odyssey.org. Everybody uses the same reference table called standardized vocabularies. That's, a, that's scary for people that would like to own it because they want to make changes, they want to adapt it to their, their own world. No, you cannot do that. And it's good. You can be lazy. This is going to be given to you. And if something is missing, we're going to talk about it in a minute, Korean uh, vocabularies, it will be added. Okay. So somebody else is doing your job of creating a reference table. Actually, lots of, the whole group is doing it, and they got really good at doing it. These vocabularies, they're all stacked up here, and they're going to be more and more and more. We have like five million concepts right now, going to be more. What they are um, built of, a, a couple of principles, five principles. All of them have a domain. They know what they are. Okay? Diabetes, the concept for diabetes knows it's a condition. It's not a drug. There shouldn't be any duplicates. We want to have one concept for diabetes, not five different because each ICD-10 has their own. Okay? Only one. Has to be comprehensive. We need all diseases, all drugs, all devices, all procedures. There should be a hierarchy. Medicine is not um, a business where things are flat. You have um, a cardiovascular disease um, and you have a heart attack. And by the way, a heart attack is a cardiovascular disease. They're not two different things. We need to capture the logic between these individual concepts. Something which, again, traditionally, um, uh, epidemiology and, and, and RWE doesn't do very well. And we need, if we have only one that represents everything, the other concepts have to be mapped. So the group, the vocabulary group, this is what they do. It's not done yet, it's not perfect. Needs to be better. We need the help of people um, locally who knows what, what the data look like and what these concepts and codes are. Um, but this is, an, and it's a, so it's a, um, a moving, not a moving target, it's a, uh, in progress. We will get better and better and better. And we're pretty good, but you know, there's lots of work to be done. Um, you, I'm gonna skip these two things. Um, the hierarchy, again, I touched it for, for a little bit. Um, diseases are not parallel things. There's no such thing, and the ICD, Code, coding system makes you believe that it is a little bit like this. It's like one man, one vote. You have one disease or you have another disease or you have both diseases. Okay? It actually doesn't work that way. And the, the, medic, the medical doctors don't think that way. But we do, traditionally. We want to fix this. I'll give you an example. This is Bacterus disease. It's like a chronic inflammatory disease, and it has an effect on the spine. Some, you see these patients, sometimes they can't stretch anymore, and so they walk like this, but hunched over. And um, this is an, it's called uh, ankylosing spondylitis, and Bacterif is one version of it. So people who have a Bacterif have also this one, ankylosing spondylitis. And that is a spondylitis. They have that too. They don't have three diseases, they have one disease, not three. And there are other spondylitis, which they don't have. This, the, we have to have a system, and the analytics have to use that system in order to understand different levels of granularity, of detail that we know about the conditions in this case, but same is true for drugs, same is true for procedures, uh, that affect the patients. Okay. So if you want, if you think about it, if the patient the, uh, has a problem, 
the ambulance gets called, at the beginning, patients just faint, doesn't feel good. The ambulance, co ambulance comes, they feel the pulse. They see, okay, there's something with a pulse. You don't, don't know yet what that is. And then they keep um, um, counting, and so there's an arrhythmia going on. So they know it's an arrhythmia. And then they run in the ambulance to the hospital, and they run an EKG, and they see it's a supraventricular arrhythmia. And then in, in the hospital, they do further uh, diagnosis, so they will have a very precise diagnosis at the end. Again, same problem. The medical uh, um, system calls it a diagnostic workup. You collect more and more and more detail. Our systems need to be able to deal with that. Drugs have a hierarchy. Okay? So you either every all the drugs have an ingredient. This is the active compound, the chemical which does the work. They have a strength. They have a dose form. In this case it's an injection. There's a brand name. There's a quantity factor if it's the liquid. There's a packaging and there's a supplier. Okay? So you can say the patient is in, on uh, defaroxamine, or the patient is on this particular marketed exact product. Both is true. Sometimes you know more, sometimes you know less. Analytics have to be able to deal with that. The hierarchies are very powerful because they allow us to determine what we want and rely on the system to pull out the right, these are patients here, <laughs> it's not scrap, um, to pull out the right, like a magnet, pull out the right patients. Because they know, kind of like the magnetic field, what is iron and what is not. Not going through all the detail. Um, drugs. Between any two uh, drug markets, you have about uh, 50, 40, 50 percent of overlap. So the exact same drug that you can buy in Korea, there's a chance of 50, 50, it'll be available in the United States. Not more. The ingredients, there's a whole lot more uh, overlap. Okay? It's in the 90 percent of, of mod modern drugs. Obviously, traditional drugs, it's a lot less than that. Um, but exact products are not shared across um, country lines. Okay? So blue is Rx norm, which is US. This is England. This is France. This is Canada. This is Germany. This is what the overlap looks like. So now we are not in the US. We are in Korea. We need a bubble with the Korean drugs. You guys need to help build it. Don't think that you can map it into RxNorm. You can only map half of them into RxNorm. The other ones, you cannot. This needs to be done. It's work, but once we've done it, it allows allow us to run all our studies in, an, in, a, in a, um, a comparable way. What have we done so far? So I'm if some of it we already discussed, Chen, Chen already mentioned some of this. We have three um, Korean, oops, where's this thing here? Is the number missing here on the slide? Uh, vocabularies that are today in the standardized vocabulary, and we need to bring in, I just heard today there's another one that apparently we need to bring in, um, the rest of them. You should be able to take your source codes and put it into OMOP without having to do much work. It should be all there. There's a mapping table, and it'll just map it over to the standard. So the, you have, of course, your own ICD, just like all other countries have their own ICD. Um, and um, it contains the, uh, the World Health Organization's uh, concepts, 15,000. And then there are 7,000 additional uh, Korean diseases, um, which are being uh, mapped into, uh, into SNOMED, which is a standard for diseases. Okay. That's available today. 
There's a co Korean drug code system with 23,000. They are mapped to Rx norm and to Rx norm, Rx norm extension. Remember, that's the one that's not in Rx norm, which is drugs which only exist in Korea, maybe in other countries too. Rx norm extension essentially is our way to, to create concepts for all those drugs which don't, ex, which don't exist in Rx norm, but they, fo they follow the same hierarchical principles. So you can run the studies with no making no difference, no, no, no changes. Okay? And then there's EDI, there's a whole lot of different codes in there, there are drugs, there are procedures, there are devices uh, that's being worked on right now. So devices are uh, in a good shape, we have to do the drugs and the procedures and also put that into the standardized vocabulary so you can just have it, okay, for download. If you have more, bring it on. Don't sit there and think, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I have to, there are so many drugs, what am I gonna do? So many codes, bring it in and there's a community which will help um, making it available. It's a community, I repeat that. What we put into the Odyssey system is gonna be available to people for free in an open source uh, uh, spirit. We want to help the other guys because eventually it'll come back to us as a, as a value proposition. The more people are in the system, the better it is for all of us. It's called network effect, okay? Don't try to keep it to yourself and, and think that will give you an advantage. It will not. The advantage comes from all of us being in the system on the standard. And so you'll, you'll hear that from us a lot. If people want to keep it to themselves, we're gonna ask uh, questions. Here's what you do. You put your, if you need help with the model or with the vocabularies, there is a forum where these things can be brought up, forums.odyssey.org. Very busy, very po popular. There's a Korean one, you can put it into the Korean one. You don't have to write in English if you don't feel conf confident doing that. And there's GitHub, where all the detailed stuff gets done. So this is more like for debates and high level principles. This is more for the detail. Don't worry about getting it right or wrong. It doesn't matter. If you put it here into an issue, it's just as good as if you bring it up here. Sometimes we will say, you know what, we should, we should discuss it in the forum. Sometimes we'll say, all right, you know, let's make a GitHub issue. Don't worry about it. Just, just come in and start talking, okay? Lots of people there who will answer these forums and they will pick up your GitHub issues, okay? And we are, this is probably not an exhaustive list. We have to update this. Claire is the one who runs the work group, the CDM and vocabulary work group. There is a meeting now every two weeks, used to be every month, wasn't enough. Two weeks, we are talking about um, 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 uh, improvements, changes, and uh, questions, okay? We will now hear from um, Erica. Um, in your material, um, it says, so I work for a company called IQVIA. Um, my colleague Mui works for a company called IQVIA. Um, and your, your material says um, Erica works for IQVIA. Eventually everybody should work for IQVIA, I agree with that. <laughs> but Erica actually hasn't moved that, uh, haven't, haven't made that move quite yet. Uh, she works for Janssen, um, is a director there for epidemiology. And she's gonna talk to you about um, um, the ETL and the, the tools and processes that we have. Go wild, Erica. Okay. I gotta keep everybody awake. It's almost time for dinner. First, I wanna thank you, thank Professor Park for the invitation to come today. It has been wonderful being here and seeing the lightning speed that Korea has gotten up to date on Odyssey and becoming part of the community. I'm also very excited that I know how to take an appropriate picture in Korea with these little finger hearts now, so I'm ready to be here. Um, 
And Christian talked through the standardization that we have within Odyssey, but I really feel like we're preaching to the choir. It sounds like everybody understands what's going on with the common data model as well as the vocabulary. Now, fortunately, our data doesn't just magically um, become in that format. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how do we get our raw data sources into the common data model. And that's typically through a program that we call the extract, transform, and load process. So I'll talk through best practices in order to convert your data. Because this is such an important part of what we're doing here, we also have Odyssey tools to support th that process, so make it a little bit easier. I want to stress that we have to do this part right. This morning, we learned about all the great research that we can be doing on the OMOP common data model, but if you don't convert your data well, you're not going to be able to do the next legend study. So let's see how we can do that. So we've done a lot of ETLs over the years, so, and we've figured out what's pretty much the best way to move through and get your data into the common data model. And that starts by getting the right people in a room together. And I mean literally getting the people and locking them in a room for a couple days so they, they can sit through and talk through the design. And typically we want people who have some CDM experience to help lead people and guide people through the process, but it's really important to have people who have experience with the raw data that you want to convert. And that's not only the researchers who work with the data, but it's the people who actually have their hands on the data and maintaining it. Those are the right people to get in the room to sit down and design how we want to do the transformation. And there are tools that facilitate that design, like White Rabbit and Rabbit in the Hat, and I'll talk a little bit about those in following slides. As you do your design, you're probably going to stumble across, like Christian just said, there's going to be vocabularies that probably aren't in the OMOP vocabulary. So maybe within your data set, you have a specific coding system that only exists in your data set. And so you're going to go through an exercise of mapping that to standard terminologies. Uh, so you'll create a mapping, and we have a tool to facilitate that as well called Usagi, and I'll show you an example of that. Once you've designed your ETL and you've done your mappings, you've essentially documented what you need to do to convert the data. So you have an ETL document. You can then pass that document off to somebody who has technical expertise in doing these types of conversion, uh, um, conversions. And I say technical person on purpose because we want somebody who has experience in making repeatable processes. So you're going to be running the CDM over and over again. You don't want a, pro a program that only runs once and then never again. And you might have a ton of data, so we want to make sure that the program is efficient. And somebody with experience in ETL can do that for you. While the person is developing the program, you probably want to uh, design some quality control uh, tests. So you can, um, we have tools to help design test, uh, a testing frameworks so that you can actually uh, test what the developers are, are making for you. And the tools that we have to facilitate this circular uh, process is White Rabbit and Rabbit and Hat again, as well as Achilles in the data quality dashboard. So let's look into some of the tools. So when we're designing our ETL, we have White Rabbit and Rabbit and Hat. What White Rabbit does is it actually just performs a scan of your database. So it's going to scan and look to see, well, what are the tables in this database? And within each table, what are the columns within that table? And then within each column, what are the distinct values that I see? So it's giving you a lot of information that you may not know about your data set. Once you have a scan, you can actually pull, pull that into Rabbit in the Hat. And Rabbit in the Hat will provide a GUI interface for you to actually design the ETL. It makes things a lot easier to work through when you have everybody locked in the room together. I want to stress that this does not generate code for you. It just produces documentation that you can hand to somebody to do the development. So this is an example of White Rabbit. This is that scan report. And like I said, it goes through and scans each table and gives you high-level summary information about what's going on. So this specifically is a scan of a table in my raw data set called patients. And it's just a table that describes individual patients, like where do they live, what's their name, what's their gender, and, um, and then tells me what's going on within those columns. So you can see here, column AC represents a scan of the column gender in this patient's table. 
and I can see that there are three distinct values. There's M, which probably represents male. There's F, probably represents female. And U, I probably wasn't expecting to see a third gender. But now, when I'm designing my ETL, I can be thinking about that. How do I want to handle that? The report also provides frequencies. You can see next to the M, F, and U how often that this occurred within the data. This also allows, when you're designing your ETL, to know where to spend your time. If things don't happen too often, maybe you don't really need to worry about them just yet. This will go through and scan all your tables and columns. Then you can use that information and load that into Rabbit and Hat. And now Rabbit and Hat knows something about your data set and will provide you an interface to start mapping. What you're looking at here is a map that we've drawn between the orange tables, which these are the tables in our raw data set, to the blue purpley tables, which are the CDMs. And I literally can just draw lines from my raw data set to the common data model. But just knowing what tables talk to what tables is not enough. We need to take down a level. So if I take that patient table, I know that the patient data probably is going to map to the person table in the common data model. If I look at that specific relationship, I can start to map the columns from the patient's table into the person's table. So for example, I know that gender in patients is going to map to gender concept ID in the person table. So I've drawn a line. But even those lines are not good enough. I'm probably going to need to give the developer a little bit more information. So even in Rabbit and Hat, I can provide logic information for the developer to use. So for example, I can tell the person, if you see M, you're going to give it a standardized concept ID of 8507. If you see F, you can give it a concept ID of 8532. These are standard concept IDs that represent male and female. But then I remember from the scan report, there, there, there's that one record of unknown, and I've decided with my colleagues who I'm sitting in the room with, that we just don't want to include that patient in our CDM. We don't know what we're going to do with that person from an analytical standpoint, so we've decided to drop it. And I've made a note to the developer in the tool. So that's about designing your ETL, so writing up the recipe for how you want to get to a CDM. And like I said, going through that process, you're probably going to find some codes that need to be mapped to standard concept IDs. And there's a tool called Usagi, which is Japanese for rabbit. And this tool will help facilitate that process. And what this tool does is it will look at the descriptions of your codes and look at the vocabulary and say, well, how, what description in the vocabulary is this closest to? What term do I think yours, your term, most closely matches to? And you can go through and accept or reject what Usagi has proposed. Usagi also has an interface to facilitate searching the vocabulary to, in order to find the codes to map to. So at this phase, you've done your ETL document, you've created any maps that you need, you will then have your ETL document that you've handed off to a technical person. But your job's not done yet. You need to prepare to test whatever's developed for you. Rabbit and Hat will facilitate creating test cases. So for example, um, I can actually, with Rabbit and Hat, create fake patient data to exhibit properties that I want to test. So for example, if I want to make sure that people with unknown gender are dropped, I can use Rabbit and Hat to generate a fake individual who has unknown gender and then test to make sure that they don't make it into the CDM. We also have tools that we can run on top of a CDM once it's processed. Achilles is one of those tools where once you have all your data in the CDM, you're going to run a whole bunch of summary statistics on that CDM, and you can then start to explore what's going on in the data. Sometimes exploring will um, allow you to see where maybe there were problems in your translation. One of my favorite parts of Achilles is this data density plot, which is a very simple plot, and all it is is showing me how much data is in each table over time. And typically what we see is the tables grow over time, and they, but they follow somewhat of a pattern. In this example that I have on the screen, we can see that in October of 2015, something happened. There was a spike in my condition occurrence table. That could cause me to say, 
I think something's wrong in the ETL. Let me go check it out. And in this case, there was. There was a problem with one of our mappings, and we were able to fix it, and now that data will look more normal. Now, throughout today, we've heard a lot of discussion about data quality dashboard. And with this year, with an odyssey, we've started to put a framework about how we want to think about data quality. And this is really important because we want to generate evidence, but we need to be confident in the data that we're generating the evidence from. This is an example of the data quality dashboard, and uh, we're following the CON framework, which is a framework for thinking about uh, data quality within observational data. At a high level, what this framework is telling me on this main page here is it's saying it's run thousands of tests, over 3,000 tests it's going to run, and 95% of them passed, but there are places where I failed. Now, as somebody who develops an ETL, I have something to go and investigate and think about. This dashboard is great, but I'm probably going to need a little bit more information. And so I can actually drill in and learn about each of the tests that were performed. So for example, at this top row, I can see that uh, uh, there was some check performed. 34% of my records violated that check. I can see a description of what the check is. There are thresholds that are set. So um, there are pre-specified thresholds of what we think is allowable for a given CDM. In this case, it was 5%. And given that I had more than 5% violate this threshold, I have failed that um, data quality check. I can additionally click on this check and learn a little bit more about what rows in my data are violating this. And I can try to understand do I have a bug in my, uh, in my CDM? Or maybe this is just what my data is and the, this threshold isn't appropriate for me. The data quality dashboard is flexible enough that you can actually set thresholds for your data set in order to make, uh, you don't wanna see those failures over and over again if they're not appropriate for your data set. So that's just a really quick summary of the process that we try to go through as well as some of the tools. But I, I want to uh, strongly discuss that this is a continuous process. This is not something you do once, you build a CDM once and you walk away. This is something you're going to be doing all the while while you're going to be doing research. You need to keep your CDM up to date. So some of the things that might trigger revisions of a CDM are more data. You want to get uh, new data into your CDM, so you'll need to process that. You might find a bug, maybe a bug that's been there for a long time, or a bug that started because there's new data coming in. Uh, new vocabulary. Christian and his team is make, are making new vocabularies all the time, and so you might need to adopt something. For example, if the, the uh, Korean um, uh, coding systems are adopted into the vocabulary, you might want to download that to take advantage of it. And finally, there could be CDM updates, which I won't st steal Mui's thunder because she's going to talk a little bit about uh, how we handle uh, revisions to the CDM. And then all these things just trigger that circular process again. So you might need to update your document, you might need to update your CDM program, and you'll have to review to see if things are working appropriately to build new CDMs. So I'm going to pass it to Christian. Okay, thank you very much, um, Erica. Final, final presentation, Mui Fan Zand, um, uh, the director uh, of uh, Open Research Networks at IQVIA, um, senior director actually, and is going to talk to you about um, what Erica just mentioned, the CDM. How do we build the CDM, how it's developing, how do we make it quality? Because that's a question that all of us constantly are going to be asked. How do we know what's in there is good? What actually is even in there? Um, so we're going to learn a little bit about how this can be done in a standardized fashion. Thank Wait. you. Um, I always have to move the mic because I'm too short. You know, these mics are always too tall. So, um, thank you, Christian. I am going to talk to you guys a bit, uh, like Christian said, about the OMOP CDM, the quality of it, through a working group that we created a couple years ago called Themis. OK, 
Okay. Um, Themis's purpose is to develop rules and regulations to combat the inconsistency inconsistent representation of the same data sources across observational odyssey, basically, and the inability to gather reliable and scalable evidence. Because everybody understands the OMOPCDM is a model, right? It's a model. It's on, out on the wiki page. You can download it on GitHub. It's really just a structural model. And we have a wiki page that talks about the data structure as well as some instructions on how to use it. But every organization, actually every person, interprets that model and what is stored in each field very differently. So what the goal of Themis is to come up with standard conventions and standard scenarios that you can follow and use as guidelines when you run into those type of scenarios. Um, and that was the purpose of Themis. And we actually formed that in 2017 at the symposium, that was our kickoff meeting. We actually had a face-to-face -face the day before where we came up with all the different scenarios that uh, folks were unsure about or wasn't too aware of what to do. So for example, if you suddenly had more than one address for a patient, what do you do? What do you do with the secondary patient? Now this was before the location history showed up. So what is the standard convention to use when you run into such scenarios? Um, during that meeting, we developed a very, very long list of all the different use cases um, that was uh, given um, during that presentation. And then we set off and broke out into what co we considered sub-working groups. We broke out into four different sub-working groups and started developing solutions and guidelines and conventions for each one of those. And we set these as goals um, it, back in 2018. So by Q1 and Q2, we were going to develop the first set of conventions and documentation. What we wanted to do was release those conventions at the Odyssey uh, Symposium in 2018. And then what we wanted to do was release two in 2019. Now, how well did we actually follow this? We actually did release the V1 in 2018, um, but we didn't release a V2 in 2019. Um, what we uh, did do during 2018 to get it to that first release was we had a face-to-face. -face. So one of the things that Odyssey does a lot is when you want a group of folks to come together and work, someone creates a face-to-face. -face. It's a face-to-face -face opportunity. It's a workshop where a organization hosts it and everybody else just comes from different um, sites and we all sit together with a purpose and to figure out something. So it, uh, you guys kind of call it as a data thon when it comes to data. Here we just call them face to faces. So in March, uh, one of the pharmaceutical companies, Amgen, uh, sponsored this in Thousand Oak, California. We actually sat down as a group. We actually went through two or three days worth of hardcore debate between all the different organizations that were there about what to do as the standard convention and what was the proposed solution. Um, we talked through almost 90 different issues and we ended up accepting 46 of them and then 40 of them we didn't start yet and three of them they were so complicated that we could not get done in two days so we said we're not even going to talk about. So. Um, and we did end up releasing all of that. We checked everything into GitHub. Uh, we started documenting all of this. We added all the documentation to the CDM wiki site in the bottom section for all the conventions. Um, and we ended up announcing that at the symposium in 2018. What we wanted to do um, for 2019 was to move ahead and create some kind of certification. So in uh, May of 2019, we actually ended up doing a hackathon, a second hackathon, uh, where we came together. And instead of debating over um, the issues, we actually took the first release conventions and started writing code. We wanted something that would help us check every single CDM that got converted over to the OMOP CDM and saying, did you pass this check or not? 
And that's where we started using the Khan framework and started going through and saying, hey, is this something we can check? If it's not, then what are the other things that we can check? What was it that we were trying to figure out? Um, so we ended up spending two days there documenting a bunch of stuff, as well as writing a bunch of SQL scripts. Um, and then at the face-to-face -face in June, um, when we sat down with some of the other folks, they're like, this is a great framework. How can we take this and make it into some kind of quality dashboard? And that was the birth of what you now know as the QC dashboard. So we took what we had and contributed that and combined that with a bunch of different working groups, such as the Achilles working group and the CDM working group, and created what we call the quality dashboard that Erica just showed you. Um, and as of then, we kind of stopped Themis for a little bit to work on that quality dashboard. Um, and what we realized is a lot of the stuff that we worked on uh, back then was only really on uh, V5.2, because at that point in time, V6 was not released yet uh, when we first started this. And we didn't want to go and m meddle in two different you know, versions because we were already having a hard time trying to get everybody to agree on one version. So moving everybody over to another version was going to be a, a bit complicated. So we didn't go there. We just stayed on version uh, 5.3. But of course, uh, during the uh, 2018, V6 came out. Now, how many folks here are on V6? Whose CDM here is on V6? Because this was a question that was asked at the US Symposium as well. So we'd like to see how many folks here are on V6. Anyone? Anyone on V6? No? OK, because that's the same answer I think we got at the US Symposium. No one's on V6 yet. Um, but we do want to start talking a little bit more about V6 and actually trying to start pushing it out more. So I want to spend a little bit of time here talking about what we are doing uh, with V6 and what are the, some of the changes. How many of you guys actually even know of all the different changes that are in V6? Besides the core Odyssey folks who develop V6. <laughs> okay. So here are some of the new changes, um, just to go over with you. There are two new tables. One is the survey table. Um, that came from a group that thought that observation was being used to keep track of surveys was not as sufficient, and there was no standard vocabulary for surveys. So we spent a lot of time working on the survey table, and now there's a standard vocabulary for the surveys as well. There's a location history table. Now, because folks wanted to track the history of patients or even the history of your providers, so there's a location history table now. Now, there's a lot of different changes from a field perspective, but I do want to, uh, and I'm, I won't go through them each one at a time, but there was a lot of changes to the cost and the payer plan period because we had a uh, insurance um, company that joined Odyssey back in 2017, I believe, and they wanted uh, to use the CDM for uh, more insurance-based information. So they updated the cost table to instead of being very long, a list of all the different costs that you can potentially have, uh, became a more relational table where every cost became its own concept ID. And then uh, this way, when we want to add more cost information, you can easily uh, expand it by adding a new cost ID and not expanding the table. Same thing with payer plan period. Um, they went through an effort to optimize some of the payer and the plan information and creating new vocabularies for that. Okay. Uh oh, jumped too fast. Um, there are also a bunch of other changes, but I won't go through them. Uh, the visit occurrence table, the location table, making it more um, international and add, by adding in the longitudinal, longitudinal information and then the NLP. Now, with that, because again, uh, not a lot of people use it, and also when we did Themis, um, we had added a bunch of new conventions. A lot of folks came out and said that there's a lot of confusion. What is the difference between Themis and the CDM working group? as well as where are all these things being documented? And as an ETL or, or as a researcher, where do I go and get all this information, right? So the CDM working group and the Themis working group, currently we've combined them into one. 
Um, so they were separate for a little bit, but now we are combining into one for maybe a little bit or permanently. We'll have to see. Um, what we're currently working on as the two different groups is we are revising the CDM instructions um, and the documentation for both users and ETLers and also quality check. So what we're doing is we're adding, uh, creating a matrix of here's your fields, but here's what you might want to watch out for if you're an ETLer. Uh, for example, the, uh, in the gender field on the person table, well that gender is your, uh, your birth gender. Not if you actually had a gender change. If you have that, then put that in the observation table. So that information will be on that line now instead of way below where the uh, conventions were. And we're gonna create one master wiki page for all of this information. Um, it does take a lot of time. So we've had three meetings now and we've gone through one and a half tables, okay? So, uh, but we would love for other folks to join and uh, work with us because maybe some of the scenarios that you guys are running into here, we've not heard about. So we would love to get those feedback from uh, folks that are working um, outside of the United States and the Western Hemisphere. Um, we do have two meetings to try to accommodate for the different time zones. Um, the first one, it is a little late, but it is the first Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's uh, 3 a.m. Korean time, so I don't think you guys want to attend that one. Um, but on Tuesday, the third Tuesday of every morning, we do have another one at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's a little bit better. It's 11 p.m. only. It's a little bit better um, for the Koreans. So if you guys have an interest, please do join us. We are spending the time to document and to hear everyone's scenario and how they are doing um, ETL and how they are using the data so that we can better document and better prepare um, the wiki site for uh, other folks to use. Um, this is our wiki working page. If you want information about uh, the working groups or anything else, like the uh, time of when it starts or the um, call-in information, please go there and look. Um, with that, I would like to thank everybody for their time and listening to all three of us talk about our presentation.